In my hand here is the box for a Mirabox 4K USB 3 HD video capture device. Now the 4K is passed through, the capture is 1080p. I'll check out the features of this Mirabox HDMI capture device that's coming up on Thrifty AV. Quick disclaimer, the folks at Mirabox sent over this capture device as a review sample. I am not being paid for this review and all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Now this in my hand is an empty box and the reason why is the footage you're watching right now is being captured right now on OBS Studio using this device. Let's back up and check out the unboxing. Here is the Mirrorbox 4K USB 3 HD video capture device and it's a nice looking box here. The box has an outer sleeve and here's the device itself, YUV444, 4K pass through, YUY2 MPEG streaming. On one side of the Mirrorbox is the HDMI input which is switchable to a USB-C input through this recessed switch here. There's also a headphone jack and a microphone input. On the other side is the uh, USB 3 connection for your computer, a power light, a HDMI output, and it says uh, quick charge here, but I do not believe this has an internal battery. Underneath here we have a Type A to Type A cable, and we have a USB C to USB C cable. There's no instruction manual, but there's a QR code to go to the download center for utilities and guides. And I'll take a look at those guides. On the back of the sheet is a warranty card. 30 day no reason, uh, warranty within one year that the thing will work. Okay, I'm gonna hook up this type A USB cable. And it's a pretty nice cable. It's a braided cable here. I've dimmed the lights to show something I normally wouldn't make a big deal of, but this capture device uh, glows with RGB when you have it plugged in, which is unusual for one of these. With capture devices, it's a good idea to compare footage recorded on a camera to footage captured through HDMI capture. Right now you're watching me through my Panasonic HCX1000. Uh, now this camera is capable of 4K, but right now I have it set to 1080p just to be fair. Now you're watching and listening through the Panasonic. Now I've switched to the Mirabox capture device and you're watching and listening to the footage on it. Let's set them side by side. On your left, I have the Panasonic HCX1000. On your right is the Mirabox captured footage. Now let's compare color bar video levels and maybe some footage video levels. Looking at the scopes for the source color bars, all the levels are appropriate. Uh, the regular white level 768, the max white level at 1023, the black levels are in the right spot, and all of the colors are landing right in those boxes where they should. Going to the captured, the peak level went way down. Uh, black levels are still pretty good. White levels, the, the peak whites are a little bit low and consequently all these chroma levels are a little bit low. Uh, none of them are landing in these boxes. So you would have to put a little bit of gain on the captured footage in order to make it match the source footage. Looking at the source levels, those are all really quite good. Everything is in the range it should be. The captured footage is a little bit low. So again, you would have to apply a little bit of gain to make it match. Now I captured in OBS Studio, so I'm gonna be interested in seeing the media info for the files captured by this device. Okay, here's the file info for the file created by OBS Studio using the Mirabox capture device. It says format is Matroska version 4. It is AVC formatted, which is advanced video codec. It is MPEG-4, 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p. Aspect is 16 by 9. Frame rate says 60 frames per second. Color space is YUV, chroma subsampling, 
420 bit depth 8 progressive scan. On the audio, this is kind of important. This has the AACLC, and this is true two channel stereo, both left and right, sampled at 48,000 hertz. Now that media info said 60 frames per second. Now I upload at 30 frames per second, but I am capable of playing back 60 frames per second on my gear. I want to see if the video is a true 60 frames per second or if frame rate upscaling is happening with this device. Okay, I am going frame by frame here. I'm advancing, I'm advancing, I'm advancing, I'm advancing, I'm advancing, I'm advancing. So it looks like every other frame is a duplicate. So there's a frame, I hit advance, looks the same, I hit advance, it moves. So even though the file says 60 frames per second, every other frame is a duplicate. So this is actually doing 30 frames per second, frame doubled. A lot of folks use HDMI capture to capture gaming and this Super Console X Pro has HDMI output. I'm going to capture some footage of gameplay using this device. I set the Nintendo 64 emulation to 1080p 60. Now I am not a gamer and this is the first time I've played this version of Mario Kart. So uh, please uh, don't be overly critical of my gameplay here. The audio was captured pretty good and it is in stereo with the music. Hey look, I made it to first place despite my rookiness. After recording this footage, I took a look at the frames per second and it was 60 FPS, but it was upscaled to 60 FPS. This was actually frame doubled 30 FPS capture. For my next test, I'm going to plug in the USB-C and switch the switch over to USB-C. I'm going to plug in the headphones and I'm going to plug in the microphone and test this device with a headset and a laptop computer. With OBS I was able to capture through the USB-C and the headphones worked. However, I could not get the microphone to record any audio. I'm not sure if it's an issue with OBS or with the microphone jack. I want to see if the mirror box is HDCP compliant. Let's hook up a Blu-ray player and see what happens. I popped in the movie Predator and even though this only captures stereo, I went ahead and set it to DTS surround sound. I was able to capture the movie with no problems and the audio is true stereo. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Get Ramirez on his feet, get to the chopper. Right. So in conclusion, overall I got pretty good results with this mirror box capture device. Video levels were a little bit low, but that can be adjusted in post-production. I like the fact that the audio was true stereo capture. A lot of capture devices out there capture mono audio. HDCP copy protection is not an issue with this device. So you can capture from a Blu-ray player or a streaming device for personal or fair use purposes. It can capture from either HDMI or supported USB-C devices. I was getting some compression artifacts when I was uh, capturing with OBS Studio, but that might have as much to do with my OBS settings as this capture device. Uh, I was disappointed that the 60 FPS appeared to be an upscaled 30 FPS. Uh, if you do like this device, there is an Amazon affiliate link in the description. Thrifty AV earns a small commission off of sales through those links at no additional charge to you. If you enjoy this video, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.